we got there. Let's see if any of my audio setups are correct. Okay, my mic's correct. My soundtrack's not. Let's get the soundtrack back up. <coughs> I am I'm not even going to bother recording until I actually have everything up and prepared. Restream, I swear to God, if you fuck me right now. Okay. Thank you, Restream. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very kindly. I think Restream's fucking me right now. Why am I getting an alert at this? I am live right now. It doesn't, but that's fine. It's like, we're in the first like 30 seconds. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, what is it? What is it? <laughs> well, I'm going to order some things online. Is there anything we needed? <laughs> uh, fucking <laughs> chat, chat. Is there anything I need from Amazon? <laughs> A hub away, Jim. Good to see you. Joe Salsa, good to see you. Rion Tap, thank you all for coming by the stream. Hey, did we need the entire series of Ooh, we <laughs> might. We might. We may need this entire series of romance novels. <laughs> Fucking Oh, Colin says slippers. Do we have slippers? slippers? Well we just got we just got kind of like moccasin slippers actually. Yeah, those, are, those are wet slippers. Yeah, they're wet. Yeah, yeah but they're they're wet. we didn't we didn't moccasin. just we didn't just Okay. <laughs> is that really the worst thing I will have done to your people? Is this the <laughs> Panzer Ninja? What's up? Uh, Christian says, "Get that smut." Ink inked, inked my pants. Thank you for the tier one Twitch sub. Welcome to the dog. Holland for being the first contributor of the day to the Fallout set review sub goal. <clears throat> Oh, you're still waiting on Shadrick's Silver Quill. Yeah, I have not. I have not done that boy yet. I swear to God. You <laughs> this can't be how high the chair norm. <laughs> don't make me. Don't make me say it. <laughs> don't start this fight. Don't. Start this fight. <laughs> don't, start this fight. <laughs> don't. Okay, that's. <laughs> Hello, Goon Prime. Thank you, Lofty Lou. Why did they type Goon into Amazon? Do, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's Goon Grease. Do we need, do we need Goon Grease? We need some Goon... I'm, I, I'm pretty sure we need some Goon Grease. There's a book called A Visit from the Goon Squad. <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> that sounds appropriate. That sounds more appropriate than anything else. I've ever seen. To goon with maximum delicacy. That is an adjective. That's an adjective of it that I that I've not heard before. I saw some people in my Discord proselytizing gooning today. I'm very proud of all of you. Somebody asked in our league section if anybody wanted to goon with them, and somebody that was not yet a part of the gooning reclamation committee said, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> And they were like, yeah, we're gooning together. And they were like, what do you mean? And then somebody linked the announcement post where I talked about everybody being in the gooning reclamation committee. This is the starting the cult? This is the, this is the, this is the cult. cult. It's the goon cult. The goon zone. The goon zone. Gooners Anonymous, if you will. Did you see my boy Quintorius got new voice lines in the Thunder Junction pre-release? I sure as shit didn't, brother. Lou, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Sure as God's got sandals, I did not see that. Your Discord peeps are deliberating over how Devoid works in Commander. Listen, I said they were dedicated. I didn't say they were literate. Come on. I don't know how Devoid works. Um, Elijah, can I just submit a Moxfield link? So, on Twitch, we have a command that is exclamation point roast that will pull up the info. On YouTube, it's in the stream description. But deck roasting is a patreon reward tier and so um if you want to get a deck roasted it involves signing up for my patreon and then you get uh access to a google form link in which you sign up with your moxfield link and then you will get an email from me about what day your deck is being roasted on so that you can come and see it and then if you can't come and see it for any of the days that month 
uh, after the stream, we chop up, we chop up the footage, and I send you the like. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that though? <laughs> what the? Yo, you'll find out. My girlfriend. I look over, <laughs> and they're just hitting me with the this. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm seeing something's gonna look good on you. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Call me Ez, please. You got it, Ez. Ran Games. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the dog home, my friend. I appreciate your Bezos bucks. Semper Goon, United States of Goon America. I love. <laughs> we gotta save. We gotta save some of these. I like Semper. I like Semper, Semper Goon. Goon. <laughs> Semper Goon a lot. <laughs> That might be the new, that might be the new standby. Stand right now we are, <clears throat> we're giving it a few minutes to find um, Beefcake Emperor, uh, because that is whose deck is up first. So I'm just gonna look through, I'm just gonna look through some of the other random shit on the first page of Moxfield for a few minutes, and then we're gonna get into uh, beefcake stack. Swords the Tyam. I'm I'm mostly just interested in what this title means because this is not Tyam colors. Swords the Tyam for the Master Transcendent, five thousand dollars. So I'm led to believe this is meant to be some type of horrific attempt at a CEDH deck. They have no. They have five sorceries. Three of which are tutors. They have mind break. Yeah, this has to be CEDH. Nobody plays mind break trap outside of CEDH. <laughs> Elvish spirit guide. That's then a Stax piece. Thorical. Kinnon in here for some reason. Is this even. What is this even. I mean, maybe this is just a secret Kinnon deck that wants to have black. Except it probably can't be because it doesn't have any... Like, none of these creatures make Kinnon win. It doesn't have Thrasios, which is how Kinnon normally wins the game. Blood Chief Ascension, is that it? That takes a while to get going. This looks like CEDH, but it looks like it might be bad CEDH. Let's see, Necropotence, Fooch. This person might have <laughs> just put every CEDH card they knew about into a deck list. 27 land, even for CEDH, 27 lands. They got some dorks, okay. They're working with something. Any thoughts on Tyvar Bellicos? I'm trying to make him an enjoyable build with him in the command zone. Let me look at him. Whenever one or more, I mean, no. First, first and foremost, not possible because it's Elf Ball. Each creature you control has whenever a mana ability of this creature resolves, put a number of one one counters on it equal to the amount of mana this creature produced. Yeah, I mean, dog. <laughs> I don't I mean listen man listen man I respect the attempt I don't know how you would go about this because it is the it's not more offensive than other than other versions of this but it's the same thing as like Vo Voha or Lathril or really any elf ball commander oh it could be yes it could be casual from a power level standpoint but let me like let me frame it this way every elf every elf ball deck in the world is no matter how tuned or expensive it is it is just a board wipe check and if people have board wipes a, a strong elf ball deck recovers quickly from that point and a bad elf ball deck does not recover and you spend the rest of the game crying about how you got bullied out of the game but 
every elf ball deck I have ever seen independent of power is by turn five you need to board wipe or I am going to present lethal in a turn and this looks like the same thing to me and so it's not <clears throat> it's not necessarily like out of it's not going to make a deck that's out of casual power instantly but it's a one of the reasons I hate on the dirty knife years so much is because that is not a play pattern I enjoy of okay let's fast forward five turns did anybody get a board wipe no howie gets it howie the belly the bellicose wins the game of commander and then if we do get it it's still not exciting because then you're just done unless we're playing like very high power and then it remains okay we either need a board wipe or we need some type of like creature stacks or like creature control which is also not a whole bunch of fun for me. I do think you can build a deck that is of an, an appropriate power level. And I will say this, if your play group plays a lot of really creature heavy decks, then it can totally work out. Then like the, the death touch thing can matter if they have blockers. But most of the time when I see these types of like swarm decks play, they have so many creatures. They have so many creatures so quickly that blocking does not matter. It just comes down to did you um, did you set off a nuclear bomb? Maybe this one, since it's meant to be mostly mana abilities, maybe this one if you kill uh, if you kill Tyvar like as soon as you see him, that could work out. It's definitely better than like Voha. I would say Voha right now is the peak of very strong not inherently interesting and is so strong that it sort of builds itself every time this is definitely better than that where the sauna go squid squad my girlfriend z main character moved in with me and we are turning the garage into a joint studio for the both of us We will get there. Uh, Felix, the, I hope my night is going pretty well. I hope yours is going well, too. Zach, I will drink. Thank you for looking out for my health. Let me get OBS back up. How do I send in a deck? So the command exclamation point roast will bring up the will bring up the Patreon. It's the it's a twenty-five dollar tier on my Patreon to do it right now. Let me drink again. God bless you, Zach. Wait, Mist Hollow Griffin? Okay, so they have... They have some type of goddamn food chain win con in here, which I guess works with... It's also an infinite for Kinnon, but what is... Oh, maybe infinite rad counters? That could do it. Infinite infinite rad counters might be might be the actual reason the master's in here because if you got infinite No, 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 the ma it's the master transcendent from the so like Kinnon's in there to get presumably infinite mana. They don't really have sack outlets for for their commander, but it looks like they have a food chain. Oh, it does look like they tried they tried to make a CEDH mill deck. But this really is just like this this deck is this deck looks like a word cloud of every popular card in blue black and green and cedh 
Because it's got one, it has one single solitary stacks piece. It has Rawl Troubleshooter, who is also from the Mothman Precon, and has no fucking business being in this deck. It's got Tally and the Kindly Lord. Okay, it's got another thing to make the food chain infinite work. That kind of makes sense. It has Gilded Drake. I have no earthly idea. I mean, it's a it's theft, I guess. If they have somebody in their play group that they're that they want to mess with. Veil of Summer, Legolas's quick re. I mean, hexproof, sure. Hexproof, hexproof was split second. Squid Squad, this is somehow a four thousand seven hundred dollar deck. I mean, it's again, it's like in in the lands for sure, because they have all the OG duels, all that type of shit, and then they have um, all the tutors. They have Imperial Seal, which we can, we can do better than that. Comedian got top four at a CEDH tournament with this commander. Comedian could get top four at a CEDH tournament with jumpstart packs. That means nothing. It means nothing about the commander. He's just fucking... He's in the Matrix. We cannot... We cannot be making... We cannot be making decisions about what is CEDH viable because fuck because comedian top forward with it that would be like saying what like shoot what footwear is viable for racing because usain bolt won a local track meet with it no mind crank is right here brother it's right here brother zach thank, zach thank you for capping out the amount of drink water redeemed And also, that's a good, that's also a good, uh, good point for me to riff off of, like, most commanders in the world are CEDH viable, because the commander is not what makes your CEDH deck viable, it is your colors. So much of CEDH is based around tutoring things and establishing card advantage, particularly mid-range hell, which is what the format is right now. Like, your commander does not matter as much as people say it does. It certainly matters. People pretend like the best the best option for the commander is what's holding the deck the decks together and that is blatantly untrue. What's true is that the like the tier 0 decks or whatever, those are the optimal choices and there's no reason generally to make a suboptimal choice when you're trying to play competitively. That said, the difference between the effectiveness of a deck running the most optimal commander and not the most optimal optimal commander, particularly in the same colors, way smaller than these people pretend far far smaller than they pretend outside of certain cases where uh, a color combo like mardu is really weak <laughs> in cdh oh no hot mardu summer oh hot mardu summer that's Zahara right was fucking taking it by storm. right what about right now shut up <laughs> <laughs> that was the most old man yelling at clouds ever <laughs> I thought we were in Hot Mardu Summer, <laughs> and then I remembered it was from like the age of your. That was the most. That was the most. Hey, is your is your color combo good? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> so oh, but so that so that is a good point. Was Mardu good other than Daihata? Ooh, no. Yeah, there you go. So if the color combos, if the. If the color if the color combo is on the weaker end, having a really optimal commander matters. If it's not, it's more about do you have the right colors and do you have is your 99 clean? 
just like how Boros rests entirely on Winota. Yes, like for Boros, oh. yeah, for Boros, Boros, it's a really big 100%. deal to be like, oh, you have to be playing, you have to be playing Winota. But for like for Sultai, pick anything, bro. Pick Yarok. Who cares? You're in Sultai. You have counter spells, mana dorks, and tutors. Like nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, Chicken Lord, if you want to submit a deck, you do exclamation point roast right now. It is a Patreon uh, tier redeem. Um, and so you get you get one roast a month. And we do these roasts once a week or twice a week to fulfill everybody that signs up. There'll be a Google form you get access to to sign up. So anyway, all of that is to say uh, Ian... Comedian getting the Master Transcendent to top four, in my mind, says very little about the Master Transcendent and much more about Comedian. Queen Luxury, true. Green, yeah. I mean, everything gets infinitely better at CEDH with most color editions until you get to four or five color. Like, I know four color is really hot right now. I personally think three is the sweet spot for having lots of options without spreading your pips so far that you get fucked out of those options because you didn't draw the right lands like i think five color um i know that five color commanders still work i think in general five color in cedh is still like the fixing is too broad to be really reliable and then two color isn't going to work outside of particularly strong things like kinnon which will work no matter what you do uh, and, but I think the sweet spot is three color or like three color with like a splash of a fourth color. I want to ping the dude who's up first to see if he's. Just to see if he wants to do it live or if he's busy at work or something. Uh, for everybody else's reference, his deck is a Tyranid deck. Um, oh, when he submitted it, he said that it was Swarmlord in the, in the zone, Secret Commander, Magus Lucia Kane. So I don't know if this is an update or if this is just meant to reflect... How it actually runs. Either of you guys going to Thunder Junction pre release, looking forward to mine tomorrow? I'm not because I got the opportunity to go on decked out um, yet again. And they have told me, they've told us both that it's like we don't have to keep things tight to the vest, right? Yeah, so I'm getting to go on Decked Out tomorrow, and I'm getting to go on Decked Out tomorrow with Covert Go Blue. And so I was like, fuck pre-release, I'm dr driving to that set, motherfuckers. Can Lucia Kane get it, though? Of course, man. Of course. I wouldn't hate a wig. But of course. That's a pronounced forehead vein, though. We gotta... Hold on. You guys, I'm being robbed. <laughs> I thought we didn't trust the bald. I said we don't trust the bald, not we don't fuck the bald. What do we talk? Do you trust everybody you've slept with? That's crazy. That's crazy. Live a little. She doesn't need a wig. Just get a plunger for extra grip. Karma. Karma. We're gonna... <laughs> 
we're gonna get you into therapy. <laughs> we're gonna get you into therapy and it's gonna get better. Bro, we do not fuck the gene stealers. I mean... We might, though. That's all I'm saying, is we might. She's gonna feed you to a bunch of alien bugs after the night. Win-win. Win-win. Yeah, it's not gene theft if I just hand them to her. Alright, so, since, since Beefcake is not checked in, and I've seen Karma say a horrifyingly, horrifyingly fucked up thing already, we're gonna go to Karma's deck and see if Beefcake comes here later. Uh, yeah, the other, Sanctuary, the other chat is on Twitch. I have a little panel that gives me the combined chat so I can see, uh, see both of you. But Twitch chat is generally a little more, little more poppin'. Alright, so everybody, let's get into it. With Karma, 5003's deck, Saskia has a side hustle as a farmer. Saskia's farm of kindred creatures, aka Timmy Mad, Timmy Smash, does want upgrades yes is open to suggestions stop playing green is my first suggestion you have mardu right here and then you have a little bit of dirt on it clean off your mardu deck oh i do love the tags though oh okay immediately i appreciate the responsible number of lands let's all take a moment i'm gonna move myself to a position where we can actually look at the deck and it's not gonna totally boof our ability to read it I want us to appreciate the 37 lands here. I have roasted probably nine decks this month. This is the highest count we've seen. Most people are trying to run 32. Those people are crazy. This person, head on straight. A lot of really fucking good lands, too. Do you... <laughs> For your wall you could you could have bought therapy for any of the statements you've made instead of these lands, but instead you have a pretty good four color <laughs> four color mana base. <clears throat> Alright, for anybody that doesn't know Saskia, you pick a person, that person gets hit no matter who you hit. Right? As long as you deal hold on. Hold on, everybody. <clears throat> Ugh. Sam Haddock, we're going to get you. We're going to put you in prison. 26 lands, red-white artifact deck. Come on. Anyway, Saskia, you pick a person. Whenever you deal combat damage to anyone, that player takes that much damage. Now, notably, because people have confused this many times, Saskia's trigger is not additional combat damage. So you cannot double stack commander damage by picking somebody and then hitting them with Saskia, you will deal extra damage, but that extra damage from her trigger is not combat damage, just if anybody sees this and is like, wow, this is so fun, I wanna do this and kill people really quickly. So, with the knowledge in mind that we are going to put people in the ground, I wanna see what fancy things is. Abzan Charm, probably 35 cents, why is this fancy? Exile a big creature, draw two, lose two, distribute two, one. This is the worst card I have seen in two weeks. I watched Z Draft Thunder Junction Wednesday. Yeah. I was, I was wading through Draft Commons, and I have not seen anything I despise so much as this card. The... The the Tarkir block constructed deck was running cards better than this. We can't be we can't have a six hundred dollar deck running Abzan Charm. <laughs> Master Warcraft, this is perfect. This is perfect and priceless. Never touch this for a moment. You choose which creatures attack and how each creature blocks. It's lovely. Boros deserves the combat trick. Exquisite blood. Okay, life gain. Sure. As long as we don't have the other half of this combo, I'm pretty happy with it. 
Mana Reflection. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice as much of that mana instead. Green player bullshit, but it's six mana. That's the that's the realest price they've ever paid for it. So sure, you can get away with that. Blood Pact. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. What is... Did you and Karma build this deck together? Probably. I... <laughs> What is up with motherfuckers picking cards that say draw two, lose two when they're bad? When <laughs> they're not. Yes, they're, not. they're bad! <laughs> is this what not being able to play blue does to a motherfucker? You start, yeah. you start picking cards. In, in black, when I hurt myself, I can hurt others. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's instant. That does. Instant instant speed does make this playable. Colossal Majesty, sure. Your commander's not four, which is... All right. Ambitions cost... Draw three, lose... What is happening? <laughs> no, no access to blue is mind-breaking, you people. Okay. Ancient Craving, draw three, lose three. What the <laughs> fuck is... What the fuck... <laughs> Crushing Disappointment, that is this entire card draw section. You draw two- <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. Life is a resource. I'm gonna throw Life up. Is that is resource. so far from being the problem with these cards. That is so far. That is so fucking far from the problem with any of these cards. Oh, sweet God. Okay, well, we'll fix that later. We'll fix that later. Oh my god, it's all worms. I'm I'm back on board with this deck. <laughs> it's all fucking worms. What? I They said Saskia had a side hustle as a farmer, so I was like, oh, it's gonna be like beasts and stuff. It's just worms. They're just a worm farmer. Yeah. Okay. Enters with counters equal to life you've gained. Trench worm. Oh, holy fuck. I'm, I mean, I don't think I was ever not, I was just not on board with a card draw section. So Trench Worm, three mana, tap, destroy non-basic land. Real as fuck, this is going in my Prosper deck. This is going in every deck that has access to red and black. Saskia is Lisan Al Gaib. Yeah, this is, this is oops, all shy huluds. Beanstalk Worm, sure, it's a worm. Intimidate. Oh, that's kind of a neat effect. It's like fear, but for but for green. Conifer worm, plus X plus X, where X is snow. All right, all right. I see. I see your game. I like that. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, gains indestructible. Fairest landfall effect ever printed. When it ETBs, make a five five. I don't. It doesn't look like you're flickering that, so that's pretty reasonable. Masker worm, exactly. My girlfriend. <laughs> worm coil engine this card's fucked up i was recently reminded of how fucked up this card was while playing against a henzy deck so i feel a little gross looking at it charnel horde worm okay trample and you can recur i mean seven mana sure you deserve that this is so far this is the most reasonable green player beat you to shit deck i've ever seen when this creature attacks, check top X where X is its power. Never mind. I'm back off board. Put a permanent card with mana value X or less. So with backup three, this is probably a 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's swing, check seven, get cheat out another seven mana creature. Okay. Interesting. Oh, the pan glacial worm. <laughs> We were we were so silly until like like massacre worm, worm coil engine, and emergent wood worm just burst up out of the ground and ate and ate all the doubters of this deck. One of which was me. These are all really fucking expensive. My God. Okay, old hexproof. Scry three game. These are some interesting. 
Okay, let's start awarding points. Let's start awarding points right away. In a deck that seems to care about life gain, that has access to white, this is the hardest I've ever seen somebody work to get that life gain instead of just plonking in fucking Lunark Veteran or like all of the everything. Because they're also in Orzhov. All of the effects that are just like, Oh, did you fart? You gain life equal to the decibels created by the uh, air escaping, or in some cases not escaping your your cheeks. The all right, bookworm gain three, draw a card. This is I like this. This pleases me. The auto -thon worm. Yeah, you're probably never cheating this out. Squid Squad, you could, you could, you could have Soul and Essence Warden, and they made the choice to stay on theme and only have fucking worms. And I respect that choice, and here's goddamn Anointed Procession. <laughs> and parallel goddamn lives, and goddamn doubling season, <laughs> and we're back off the train. I mean, how many... How many tokens are we making? We're making, let's see, token count. We got one from Armada Worm, two from Worm Coil Engine. Three if World Spine Worm dies. Four for that, whatever the fuck that is. Oh, five for Farmhand. I fucking love that tag. Oh no. Oh no, this is where the tokens are. Oh no! Okay, I see what's happening. This is fucking this is Dune Part 2. This is just this is just the final scene of Dune Part 2. Okay, Phyrexian Reclamation. See, here's where here's where we get some goddamn good good advantage engines in in the recursion slot. I'm gonna keep it so real with you. I'm gonna keep it so real with you. Cut soul ring. You'll like it more. You'll you'll just you'll have more fun. You know what soul ring could be? Soul ring could be another worm. I know you got a lot of I know you got a lot of fucking I know you got a lot of stuff to pay for. I'm just saying. It could be another worm. Or yeah, greater good would be great. Um, let me tell you. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. We want to talk about upgrades, people. Like Rishkar's Rishkar's expertise for six for six mana is drawing you more cards than everything else in your card draw section. We can replace. We can replace. All of the instant and, instant and sorcery card draws with Rishkar's expertise, and then we're and then we're fucking back and we're done. Or you could do like, I guess you probably wouldn't want to do Guardian Project because you do have a lot of you have a lot of token generation going on. Um, but Garuk's Uprising yesterday is when you should when you should have it because this this cares about uh token creatures are fine with this great or good yeah same thing that will also fit into your life gain plan um oh sorry no i missed this up with a different one Mar <laughs> march of the wood fuckers yeah great or good great or good would really work this deck may have I don't think this deck has enough recursion to want to be discarding three. You could definitely make it work. You could definitely make it work, but independent. Like we're talking about, we can talk about tribute to the world tree. Also great. We can talk about all of these enchantment permanent based card draw engines, but just like one to one, like drop blood pact yesterday for life's legacy or drop ambitions cost for life's legacy you know it's a it's a 250 card which puts it outside of my budget for most decks um oh check keyword soup 
Blow, Bow of Nylia. Attacking creatures have Death Touch. Oh, okay, you do have some Recursion there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Radiant Destiny. Creatures get plus one, plus one. I'm be Hey, I'm guessing this is going to be Worms. Assemble the Entmoot. Create, create some tokens where X is life gained. Put a reach counter. Okay, Whip of Erebos. So you do have some recursion. I'm going to say... Um, this deck doesn't have a lot of draw, right? And if you... If you want to guarantee that you see one of something, a game of Commander, you probably need to have like... I think it's like 10 or 11 cards if that do that thing if you want to be confident that you're going to see one of them. You still might see it with less, but I think you have like four or five ways. You have Nylia, which goes to bottom and is not super effective. Uh, you have Erebos, which is two. You have that one worm, I don't remember its name, three, and then Reclamation, which is four and is just for creatures. Um, and so you would need to put more recursion in before I would be comfortable saying like, oh, you can, you're definitely gonna be able to recur if you discard a lot. That said, life's legacy, immensely impactful. Greater good would also be a really strong enchantment. Tribute to the world tree would be really strong. I don't think you have anything entering under the three power except for voracious worm. And even that is entering probably with at least one counter on if you're playing it um you do have two tutors which i'm inclined to forgive because the rest of the deck is so funny and for my money i cannot identify like oh i'm gonna tutor this every time and win the game for it and that is exactly exactly how tutors should be used they should be used to make a deck able to deal with more things um without just solving the game for you every time so i'm down with these two tutors uh oh calamity thank you for john i can hear it i think it still might be broken on y'all's end can i How much ramp is there? Good question. The answer, not enough. We have five we have five land ramp cards. We have, I think, zero ramp creatures, and then we have five ramp. So we have ten ten, count them ten ramp cards. Which is again, that's enough to guarantee uh to guarantee that you'll see like one of them a game. Um, so the things I would fix, life's legacy yesterday, uh, if you want to, if you want to proxy in more staples, probably great henge, um, great henge up the beanstalk. Yeah. Somebody just set up the beanstalk. And that would be almost thematic as like a big old worm, a big old worm climbing up the beanstalk. Because that's any spell with mana value 5 or greater, which is a lot of your things. And then I would look for... Abzan Charm goes away. I'm sorry to say, Abzan, Abzan Charm goes away instantly. Uh... Mana reflection you can keep because you do actually you do actually want to mana explode, but I think I think everything in your card draw section except for colossal colossal majesty gets dumped, and I think Abzan Charm gets dumped, and this guy's phenomenal, perfect for the deck. Uh. And then personally, for casual decks, I like Cutting Soul Ring. This deck probably needs it desperately because it's clawing for mana. And then I would just pick any of the things we've listed as better card draw options. 
and the deck will probably run better. But I like it. It's good stuff. And Saskia can definitely get it if anybody was questioning. Of your... Of your worm cards, I would say Roar of the Worm. Oh no, the four. I would say Worm Quake. No, Worm Quake makes a 10 10. Either Roar of the Worm or Worm Quake is going to be your like absolute worst. Absolute worst um, worm card if you want to cut that four more card draw. Oh, Mirari's Wake. Also really good, really expensive, uh, but very, very good. And then... Why not Advent of the Worm? Wamba, just because Advent of the Worm looks like one of the few things they might be able to cast in the first three to five turns of this game, everything else does not look like it. So I would try to get like a couple a couple card draw engines versus these one-off card draw things and then maybe like rampant growth or something, just like one or two more ramp spells just to guarantee guarantee that you get it. Unami, I am reading YouTube comments. Chat is just moving kind of fast. Uh, Laura, it's not open submission. Um, if you sign up for the Patreon, you will go into the queue. The next deck roasting stream is happening the 17th. And then after that, I think it's the 24th. And then there'll be one or two after that to finish it up for the month. Uh, Calamity, thank you for the 100 bit cheer. Welcome to Dog Heaven. Also, Ephemeral Eel, thank you for the five months in a row at Tier 1. Happy pre-release day to you as well. Welcome back to the dog home, my friend. And Vivitron, thank you for the follow. Vargas, what's up, my friend? That's for you, Unami. Thank you. Alright, we're going to move on to Panzer Ninjas. First EDH deck upgraded in quotes from the precon mix of goading and dragons. So there's got to be a fur crag. Yeah, it's a fur crag deck. God bless you. I love fur crag. Content warning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you want to know what the name of this deck is? Draconic Descent These Nuts. No, it's spelled grammatically correct. It's these nuts. That's a fail to me. These. That's a fail to me. You don't do that. We're going to go balls to the walls. You get crazy with it. <laughs> Frolicking Wombat, thank you for gifting five tier one subs. That is so generous, my friend. Welcome to Dog Heaven. Thank you so much. And thank you for contributing to the Fallout set review sub goal. We're getting very, very close. All right. So Pandra Ninja's Furcrag deck. Let's finish reading the primer. Plan is ramp into Furcrag, ideally having a roaming throne in play, then proceed to gaslight for a bit until the table realizes that Furcrag is a 10-10, then die to the horde of tokens or whatever bullshit the Naya player was doing. If the ramping fails, I just sit there and pretend like I am not a problem. He just like me for real. Tutors are fucking cringe. 95% of the time, I'm so with you. Some decks do need them. And we will determine if your deck is one of those. First and foremost, are you a greedy, greedy land cutter? 35? I think you're okay. For anybody that hasn't met Furcrag, uh, whenever you attack somebody with a dragon, you get to goad one of their creatures. So if, you, if in one combat you attack all three people, you get to goad a creature from each person. Whenever you deal combat damage... Or sorry, whenever 
a creature deals combat damage to an opponent if that creature had to attack this combat you put a 1-1 counter on Furcrag and you draw a card notably that cares about goad it does not care that Furcrag was the one to goad them so you can do like broad goad shenanigans and not swing Furcrag and you'll still be good Generally, I like Goad. It's uh, my favorite control strategy in the entire world. It's very silly. It forces people to actually fight instead of just pillow fording. It's one of the most necessary mechanics in all of Commander. So I'm going to be super, super fucking biased against this deck. I do want to start with LMAO Get Fucked. Arcane Lighthouse. Creatures your opponents control lose Hexproof and Shroud. <laughs> Bring it in, brother. That's... Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Bloodthirsty Blade, I like that. Counterspell Psych Rift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we out here. Spectacular Showdown. This is one of my favorite finishers in all of Magic the Gathering. Is goading and double striking everything. Counterflux, Dream Fracture, Jessica's Will. Then Sword of Light and Shadow. This is interesting. I feel like this is a... This has to be a recency bias card. Or it has to be a table pick. Like the Orzov player has to be just like punching you in the nuts over and over for Sword of Light and Shadow to be the pickup. Because I can't imagine... I mean, maybe they're just blowing up Furcrag and you're like, this is Furcrag recursion in Is It? Oh, 100% the Orzov. The Orza. Hey, I know what that's like. <laughs> more goad love it oh this fucking switcheroo i do like illusionist gambit oh wait this is not th i was thinking of take the reins this is surprise stop hitting me and hit everybody else instead please surprise shorty, surprise, shorty. i love wars toll i love every i love all right this deck is a hit Anzrag's Rampage. Gotta be recency bias. You gotta be playing against these artifact bros because this card is bad. Oh, we got our girl Karlak in. That makes sense. That's on theme. And then Blast Act. Yeah, this is the board wipe that every is it player has to rely on because we don't get good ones. Um... I do want to address, my friend doesn't like consistent goad because it turns magic into repetitive attacking each turn, which makes magic boring. That's why I say goad's my favorite control strategy, because it is a control strategy. It can make magic a lot more interesting than, uh, than Selesnian Pillow Fort Day, but you are reducing individual player agency because you're forcing them to do things. Now, my rebuttal to that is if you look at all of the fine and funny cards this person has has picked and if you look at that sweet sweet dragon boy we know what's better for you and you should li and you should listen to us therefore goat is fine untagged creatures all right so this is where we get into all dragons okay so you have a this this is like this is a self-goated a self goaded creature. So that works really well. Vengeful Ancestor, more goad. Imrith Desert Doom. This is just super good dragon, <laughs> sure. Lausanne, Dragon's Legacy. Oh, let me see if they want suggestions for no reason. Yes. Okay. Cut this right now. Right the fuck now. I mean, like, I get you're pinging the board. I feel like... If you want to gaslight, this is not working for you. May I suggest Hot Pursuit? Let's look at Hot Pursuit. And see if that's what you should include instead of Lausanne. Suspect, and then as long as that creature is also goaded... Oh shit, get this in the booth right now. 
my man, my man, <coughs> my man put Hot Pursuit in the deck yesterday. You don't have to cut Lausanne for it. Like, I get that this is good because it's giving you a repeatable damage trigger. Um, but you also have Scourge of Volcus. And you have Incinerator of the Guilty. That's phenomenal. Kaiga the Tide Star. Babe, do you know there's a 5-5 five, five dragon that when it dies, you just take something? You gain blue. Oh, I need that. <laughs> I, please? It's 60 cents. We can buy 10. <laughs> All right, then Laughless the Dragon Queen. Oceanus Dragon. All right, Goad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scourge of the Throne. All right, attack. Att combat phases that works well steel hell kite yo you have hate in your heart this start this started out so silly and then it's like deal a bunch of fucking damage deal a bunch of fucking damage to everything hey did you did you own something get rid of it i don't want you to have that anymore and then of course we have psych rift which is i thought that was gonna be the meanest card in this deck Warmonger Hellkite is beautiful. This is again... <laughs> my brother in Christ, if you are trying to goad things, why are you sweeping the board so much? Yo, you hate these people. You hate the people you play with. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, sure. I see we have a lot on the sideboard. Two more board wipes. So I would say, I would say you are kind of like, you're trying to, most decks, most decks can pick two things to do well. It's easy, every deck can do at least one thing well. Most decks can pick two things to do well. You start to get in trouble when you try to do three or more things well. That's when your your card base starts to get spread out so far that you can't do all three things that well. You have somehow managed to choose two things that are just diametrically opposed to one another because the two things you have chosen to do with this deck is goad my opponent's creatures and prevent my opponents from having creatures and we have to we have to we have to come together on that <laughs> cuz we can i think we can adjust we can adjust slightly <laughs> and it'll be okay burn burn it all we don't but then you can't goad it if it's burnt Red Death Shipwrecker, perfect. Grenzo, perfect. Goad, Gaslight, Girl Boss. I automatically agree with everything, with everything in this section. Biden of Thassa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fumiko, yeah. Yeah, these are all great. I would say, um, it's definitely good to have. It's not bad to have these in the pocket. It's not bad to have these in the pocket. You have you have a sub theme of creature of clearing the board, which does operate uh, completely against what Goad wants to do. Um, so I would either make more Goad or look for. Uh, a second or lean more into the like bunch of dragon synergy um if you wanted to do something funny you could probably cut these to try to like clone fur crag and that would both be like sometimes there's too many things to go so we need nuclear options yes sometimes that's that's why like you keep a few you've got a lot <laughs> you've got there's a lot of hate in here there's a lot of hate in your heart um 
And so I would just, for those situations, invest more in things that will build up your own board presence to maybe not need that nuclear option so quickly. Like, let me see if you have... You don't have a lot of instants and sorceries, so I don't think you need the thing I was about to suggest. Um, but I think a little like, oh, there's reflections. Yeah, that's good. I would say stuff like that that you can use on Furcrag that's going to get around the legend rule. I think will work better. Uh, not only from a perspective of like not making your table come after you. I think it will just be more effective because let, or let me sell it to you this way. If the reason you need board wipes is people have too many things for you to goad, if you instead clone Furcrag, you now have twice as many goad triggers to throw around the table. And you now have twice as much card draw. And you now have twice as much plus one, plus one counter shenanigans happening on Furcrag. And then you can still have some of these board wipes and you are more likely to draw into them because you have multiple Furcrags. So that's really that's really what I'm saying. So things like um I think Spark Double is like the oldest version, the oldest version of it, but you would look for other effects like that. Um and it also gives you insurance against Furcrag being hated out. Probably just has two legs. Lame. You got me. You fucking got me. Oh yeah, then there's Sakashima of a thousand faces. I was going to recommend it, but I would not recommend Vesuvian Diplomacy. It's such a fun card. He's not, this person's not targeting them, their stuff and not enough. How can I, oh, Duplomancy. Yeah, they're just not, if you, you, if you switched up a lot of the deck to target your own stuff, then, uh, then Vesuvian Duplomancy would be great. You're not really doing that. So I would say one-off creatures like Sakashima and Spark Double to just become second fur crag uh will i may end up being wrong i would say will probably solve your solve the problems you need the board wipes for while keeping you on theme versus just being like can ever can we all just fucking stop playing creatures for a minute can we all just fucking stop uh, and then you've got a, a just a totally real amount of ramp for all the shit for all the shit that you're doing in this deck. Shout out my goat mana geyser. Shout out my goat mana geyser. Now I'm looking at your looking at your sideboard. I think Terror of the Peaks is Terror of the Peaks, better version of Scourge of Valkus. But you could just trade these two out and then start cutting the other things like Lazan. Uh, Ancient Copper Dragon's really good, but it's just like a generic good card. Terror of the Peaks is the only thing where I would say like get this in get this guy in the booth right now. And probably for Scourge of Valkus. The rest of the deck, I like this. I love Goad. I love, uh, I love Wars Toll, forcing people to just all in or nothing. And when you have Goad, it forces an all in every day. Um, Irenicus's Vile Duplication, another good copy spell. You have a totally reasonable amount of lands, and I love the commander. So like A plus, A plus on this thing. Um, but I would, and again, you don't have to drop most. I would just say like one or two. Like Steel Hellkite. Steel Hellkite is kind of a fucking meme. It's a very, very, it's a, it's very narrow in how it's uh, 
sniping your opponent's kneecaps. And so I would take this out for Spark Double. Like a second fur crag in every in every possible situation, a second fur crag is more valuable than a steel hellkite. Unless you have a, a dipshit token player. If you have a dipshit token player, there's other cards we can work with um, that maybe aren't Steel Hellkite. But if you have a dipshit token player you play with every day, I can see why X equals zero is a godsend. All right, from here, we're going to move on to a Hobo 8 Gym. Charge counters go burr. I can already tell this deck is fucking terrible. Fuck you, my grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards. You can't you can't say that and charge counters. We gotta pick one. We gotta pick one. Scoop and cry. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's Traz and the Infinite. Alright, so we have 34 lands on the low side. But I, I feel like this deck is going to be up to some bullshit. Cabal Stronghold. All right. Forced Draw. Interesting. Dross Pits. We're going deep for some of these things. All right. Let's look at the artifacts. So Charge Counters. Get Snakes. Manifold Key. Mill off of charge counters. Move charge counters. Untap some stuff. Proliferate. All right, here's our first option of proliferate. Draw a card. <sighs> what not playing blue does to a motherfucker. What not playing blue will do... Like, at least... I mean, at least you're mono black, so it's probably working. Put a charge counter or mill... So it's a mill deck, I guess. <laughs> Sting. Does Trazen tap? Oh, it has activated abilities. Okay, so yeah, Trazen's probably tapping for one of these various things. Sack an artifact to proliferate. Omezawa's Jit... Oh, put two charge counters on it. Okay, okay. Cloud Key, Coalition Relic. What the fuck is... What are we doing with Glass Cast Heart? Beginning of your upkeep. Oh, okay, so... We have the first real payoff with charge counters from Jinxed Choker Damage. Palantir of Orthanc. All right. Sculpting Steel. Fucking Semblance Anvil. God damn. A lot of artifact untapping, presumably to make Trazen spin around like a fucking bla Beyblade. At the beginning of your main phase, if Ventifact Bottle has any charge counters on it, tap it and remove all charge counters from it and make a bunch of mana. This is the second mass mana producer we've seen. Charge counters to tutor. Tap two artifacts, untap. The payoff is grind clock in the graveyard and then make Trazen mill people. Got it. That's horrifying. Put a charge counter on empowered auto generator. Add X mana. Okay, so more more ramp. Lux can't I love this. This is Z and I put this in a Jolatoyic deck. Oh. Because we had a because <laughs> we Lux Cannon is probably the funniest thing you can Beyblade because it just destroys anything. Look at the top card. Oh, Mystic Forge. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scepter of Eternal Glory. Trading Post. I guess it's Recursion for your artifacts if you need Artifact Recursion. Caged Sun. Staff of Nin. 
How much how much mana is Staff of Nin that we're paying for one six mana? Okay, draw a card and upkeep. Again, yeah, Phyrexian Arena Band. Somebody somebody pointed it out. Every we have a bunch of black decks that are not running Phyrexian Arena, but are running far worse. This could be a secondary out if you have a lot of mana and an abundance of ways to untap Trazen. Where's Piki Pala? If we're doing if we're doing this Trazen bullshit. Trazen has death touch? Oh shit, I can't read. Okay, staff you're you're so back with Staff of Nin. You're so back. Oh, I guess it's two mana to do it, so you need near infinite mana anyway. Called the ring, so more card draw. Creatures you control are artifacts. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, make a creature. Yeah, you do probably need this to not get your chest punched in. You... A hobo, you're you're telling me you sent in a deck named Scoop and Cry that's meant to mill people out with goddamn Voltaic Key untapping, and you said and you're saying no stinky infinites. I respect it. I see your game. That's the correct answer. Put a charge counter on, sacrifice, put two on, lots of mirrors, foundry inspector, okay, a million tiny robots, a million tiny robots is the, is what I'm getting from this deck. What the fuck is Amaranthine Wall doing here? The gas ran out. This was the one I this was the 138. Oh no no no, gains indestructible. Never mind. You mill it, you give Traz an indestructible. The gas is back in. Never mind. Yeah, okay. This is Traz and protection. Sure. Okay. So people at your table know. So people at your table know what the fuck is coming then. Fog is crazy. They have Darkness, which is a one mana black instant that says prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Oh. Fog, this is, I, me when I love recency bias, fog, fog is a crazy fucking thing. I feel like Rowan's works here only because you are guaranteed you're guaranteed to get the bargain you're guaranteed to get the bargain thing off because what 50% of your deck is artifacts dark bargain I want to say there's probably something better but in mono black there might not be and you do want you do want stuff in your graveyard. I'm not sure if there are other, like, if there are surveil options in black. Because that would probably be better than this. Exile the top three cards of your library, then exile the top three. Okay, something goes to hand, something goes to graveyard. Everything you're picking is trying to fill your yard. <laughs> Dig it. Digging goddamn deep for these for these ramp cards. Nuclear Fallout. I like this card. I should I need to pick this up from Mothman, goddamn. Ransack the lab I appreciate, because we are trying to fill the graveyard. Target player mills two, draws two, loses two. <laughs> sure. Sure. You lose X, create X tapped. Wow, that is probably really strong in this deck. I do like, 
I do like that you have a couple backups in case somebody gets your ass. Destroy all non-artifacts, sure. Doom Whisperer would be insane here. Let's check if Doom Whisperer would in fact be insane. Oh yeah, you want this guy yesterday. Yeah, you want Doom Whisperer in a, uh, a couple days ago. Probably instead of fucking darkness. Probably instead of darkness, you want, you want a thing that's actually going to get you... Life is a resource! Life is a goddamn resource, Jim. Not an artifact doesn't fit the theme. Oh my god, every single thing is an artifact. True. Well, this isn't a fucking artifact. Is this on theme? Is this on theme to you because it has Necron in the flavor text? Also, I mean, okay, so you're bargaining an artifact? We're reaching pretty far. It does say ring. <laughs> so true. And this is also definitely not an artifact. The hell is Rowan's Grim Search doing there? Rowan's Grim Search is getting a buy because you can absolutely bargain it every time you get it. And if the spell is being cast bargained every time, it becomes slightly it becomes playable. What I appreciate the most about this deck is probably the amount of nobody really being sure what the fuck is going on until you get there. And the fact that you can be totally blown out by one, by one mass graveyard exile. I respect that in a deck. I respect a deck that will try to gaslight gatekeep girl boss and will accept their fucking death as soon as somebody punches them in the kneecap. Oh, this thing works. Grim Captain's Locker? How about this, Surveil 1? How about this, if every artifact... Yeah, oh, sh there we go. Thank you very much who called that. Super Sam, thank you for that call out because this is phenomenal for that. And it's practically, practically recursion. What's up, VHS content creator? Thank you for coming by the stream. Um, also, it does have a skull on it, which fits Trazen. Fits Trazen even more. May, in fact, be Trazen's uh, little trapper keeper. What's this transform into? X mana? Okay. I think this this feels like it's perfectly in the spot of immensely frustrating to play against and totally fucking fair. Like at no point can you point at part of this deck and be like, oh, this is really truly cheating. But my estimation is that playing against it feels like it's cheating the whole time you, you the whole time you're going. But we got to get darkness the fuck out of here, dude. We got to get darkness right the fuck out until Lux Cannon comes down. As soon as Lux Cannon comes down, then the deck is totally back to bullshit. And your table is justified in not speaking to you for a week.
It's like cheating on the test only enough to get a B minus. True, you know, that's true. You're cheating, but not so much that it becomes suspicious. That's like the no the no infinite thing they said earlier. Like if I cheat, if I cheat a little too much, they'll get mad and they won't let me do it anymore. But I'll cheat just enough that I'll mill everyone out, make them really angry, but they'll let me bring the deck back next Friday. We're going to move on to the Mighty Rusha's deck, which says no primer, just the description. Feel free to demolish it or laugh at it or whatever. Constructive criticism also helps, though. I refuse to be... Chungle down, Bim! I love the fucking name. Anybody that doesn't recognize the name, please go watch Fantasy High right now. I play this l screaming little freak as the payoff for never having a hand, cons constantly drawing 5 to 10 cards in my upkeep, and descending, chungling down, as it's affectionately referred to. Nonsense rules. $900, totally reasonable, um, totally reasonable amount of lands, what I'm presuming to be a proxied OG duel driving about a little under half the price of the deck. All right, so at the beginning of your end step, if you descended, everybody discards or sacrifices, or they take three. For those of you keeping track at home, incredibly weak effect. So let's see what they did, they've done to make it good. Soul Ring, cut it. Arcane Signet, fine. Graph Stone. Probably fine if you're milling or discarding. Signet's good. Talisman's good. Black Market Connections. Where has this been in every other fucking deck that ran black that had card draw problems? Burnished Heart. Sure. Giraper Orrery. Uh, double Land Drops. And then if you have no cards in hand, draw three. Okay, so you are trying to be... You are trying to just throw your cards onto the table like a petulant little child. Solemn Simulacrum. And then Asylum Visitor. All right, Madness. If that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and lose one life. That's fun. If you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, draw two cards and lose one life. Scroll Rack? What the fuck are you doing with Scroll Rack? The Burnished Heart triggers Descend, right? Yes, it does. So Burnished Heart does work as a Descend piece. Then we have Tarion's Journal, Anya's Ravenger, discard your hand, then draw three. Brass's Tunnel, discard, draw. Mazatlanti, draw, discard. Discard your hand. At the beginning of your end step, I was wondering how we were getting to Hellbent. I saw all these things to discard, which is going to, like, make Descend happen. And I was like, how do you ever get an empty hand? And it's this motherfucker. It's this motherfucker, Joey. Okay, another discard your hand. All right, a mana outlet to discard your hand. Are you cursing yourself with this thing <laughs> for hand discard? Deck of many things. The result is zero or less. Discard your hand. Perfect. Keeper of the dead. Destroy a non-black creature has two fewer creature cards in his graveyard than you have in yours. This is hot. This is a pretty hot pickup since you are apparently vomiting your deck into your graveyard like you're at a fucking Taco Bell eating competition. And so you probably get to do this all the time for free. Descend trigger. Descend trigger. Which is also good. Fuck non basics. Get him out of here. Some more hellbent stuff. 
God, discard your hand. Null Brooch is funny because this is like every blue player is too much of a coward to do this because none of us want to discard our hands, but the fucking, the goddamn Rakdos players, no fear. No fear in the world. Oh, Descent. Okay, so one mana Descent trigger. Exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand. Phenomenal. More non-basic land hate. So who plays Gaia's Cradle at your table? Like, if I've learned one thing from doing deck roasting, it is that people pick cards 90% of the time that are good, and then 10% of the time to counter the thing that beat them last Tuesday. And this is the second thing we've had that gets rid of non-basic lands. And the first thing I was willing to let slide because it sacked them. This guy is just hateful. It may not be Gaia's Cradle because this thing benefits from colorless producing lands. So maybe, maybe this guy plays against an artifact player or like a Tron player. All right, more to, more to send. This is an action, an an okay card. I'm not even sure what this one's for. I'm not even sure what this one is for. Destroy target enchantment. So this is another. This is me when I recency bias. Just a good card. Just a good card. Uh, really good in the context of them just picking up half their deck every turn and dumping it into their graveyard so that there's always 10 or more creatures. Okay, payoffs. Tokens. Get tokens when creatures leave grave. Draw cards on upkeep if you're hellbent. Give stuff haste. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player loses one life for each card in his or her hand more than you have in your hand. Filth. Swamp Walk. All right. Bone Miser. Whenever you disc... Okay, whenever you discard, get stuff. There's Sir Conrad. Was wondering when we were going to see him. Terror of the Peak. I love a good... I love, I love me a good going straight off theme just because something is so fucking powerful. And Terror of the Peace is exactly that. Every red deck, every red deck that plays creatures eventually has to make the question, do I proxy Terror of the Peaks to put it in this deck? Because Terror of the Peaks is one of the strongest cards to ever exist in Commander. All right, Blade Wing. Now we're back on theme. Now we're back on to theme on theme dragons. That high guy 420, thank you for the tier one Twitch sub. Welcome to the dog home, my friend. I appreciate your generosity. Price of knowledge. No maximum hand size. Deal damage to that player equal to the cards in their hand. Are you trying to lose? Like I trust you. I'm tr I don't know if I trust you. I'm trying to trust you with what's happening here. And so far, I've seen like I've seen a lot of shit that is ready to punish you for not being hellbent and a lot of things that want you to be hellbent. And I think we've seen like four things that can get you hellbent with no tutors and i really want to see this deck work mortal Kombat's fucking brilliant a plus for that but i'm just wondering like if we want to get to hellbent
how do we so there's curse of obsession that's one way i'll call this half a way because you need a lot of mana to make this work 2.5 deck of many things can we're gonna call it like we're gonna call it another half because they have no control over whether it does, and it does not appear like they have a meaningful way to influence the result of that die roll. And I want to be clear, I like the deck regardless. I like, I like this like willful hatred towards everything blue loves. I just don't I just don't think that there's a lot of not having like I think this is this smells like secret blue player to me is what this smells like because when I read this intro it was like oh never having a hand that's based as hell I could never me personally I could never do that because I need I need the tasty cardboard in my little gremlin hand. So I was really excited to be like, oh, this deck doesn't give a shit about the cardboard. It just wants to have it just wants to have Chungle Down Bim on the field as they throw it all away. And I don't know if that's true. I mean, I'm sure it happens, right? Because you have you again have you have four ways. And four ways to do it with no Four ways to do it with no tutors tells me it probably happens maybe once a game. Unless you have a lot. Like, I think you have. I think you have more ways to benefit from not having. You have more cards that care about you not having a hand than you have ways to not have a hand which is correct but then you also have a lot of shit that can't get you to not having a hand needs more one with nothing there we go where's this at I want to see this in the deck right now I want to see this in the deck Nerdmore, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate those Bezos bucks. Welcome to the dog home, my friend. I want to see one with nothing. I think somebody also called out Scourge Familiar. Discard a card, add some man. Like, I want to... Oh, it's an April Fool's card? Print it, fuck, print it anyway. Memory jar. There we go. Like I'm just saying we need We're we're like halfway to a theme. We're halfway to this theme, and I love this theme, and I want us to get all the way there. And there's a couple things that are just like, like Terra the Peaks could eat it for this. I'll be real. Terra the Peaks could eat it for the bit because so much other stuff stays on theme. Also, when are creature cards leaving your graveyard other than, like, I mean, when you recur, okay. I don't know if I like desecrated tomb in here as far as as far as payoffs go. Like it definitely works. It's just like one 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 bat a turn versus 
having memory jar or scourge familiar I don't think that's a real comp I don't think that's a real competition but we're so close to greatness here we're so close to greatness could put Anja in here oversold cemetery is in the deck I don't think Anja would work here only because there's not there's some stuff with madness. There's not enough there's not enough stuff with madness to make this like a really reliable way to filter. I guess you could get it once a turn. Chainer's also great. Well, quite frankly, there's not a Asian mom. There's not a lot of things that care about descending, and the commander cares about descending. So, like, I don't think you need too many more actual descend payoffs if your commander is a payoff for the thing, and he's also very cheap. So it's not likely to be a problem if he gets killed once or twice. His effect also isn't so onerous to make everyone else like super mad. Sam, you make a good point. Like Blood Scrivener Blood Scrivener Anja's Ravenger Amber Gristle Mall. All of these things could be cut for Anja Falcon Wrath because you like. We've talked a big game about not having a hand, but I don't see a deck that actually wants to not have a hand. Or I see a deck that like wants to not have a hand. I don't see a deck that's committed to not having a hand. I see a deck that is committed to discarding and then getting and then getting new cards in hand and then every like other game or every third game it's committed to not having a hand period but it's not ready it's not all the way and we and we can get it all the way with terrible terrible fucking cards like that one drop red black card that makes you just card your whole hand and then we're there and then you have a true nonsense deck but right now right now all i see is a rakdos disc as a rakdos descend deck that happens to have some payoffs for some shit that doesn't happen enough i want like 10 cards that dump your whole hand Infernity Barrier? White Wolf, do you mean a different... Is it maybe Infinity Barrier? Is there a different card we're talking about? No? Oh, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh meme. Okay. Alright, so we're making shit up. Thank you. God bless you. Nox Skyfall, thank you for the Twitch follow. Welcome to the doghouse, my friend. We're going to move on to Don't Fear the Heroes. This is my own personal brew that I use to make my friends salty and to make people understand the power of lands. Everybody does. I use this to show how green isn't just good at cheating on taxes. It also lays waste to the entire board. I'm going to change the infinite in this deck, and I want to see if you can see what they are. Well, first and foremost, no, I can't. I can't see haters, and I also can't see infinite combos. They do want upgrades, looking to show the unholy power of green tax evasion. Pick fuck anything green! Anything $2.6 thousand dollars. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's Lord Wingrace. Oh my god.
I'm gonna get some water for this one. Oh, I'm I'm gonna throw up. Oh. <laughs> First and foremost, I love the challenge of can you can you crack the code of what goes infinite in my deck and then they have a tag called copy with dual caster mage and twin flame just inches from each other just inches from each other okay all right we have better card draw than everyone else today has picked dread presence oh land okay landfall card draw which in win grace I'm sure is working out get rog one ring wheel of fortune easily easily the best card draw options we've seen picked all day and I hate that it's from the fucking landfall player double double land drops time loop I think works with all the discards shieldred I want us to return I want us to return to the thesis of this deck that said I want to make people understand the power of lands and in a deck meant to make people understand the power of lands what I see is making people understand the power of goddamn card draw Right, Shieldra the Apocalypse, Wheel of Fortune, the One Ring, Dual Caster Infinite Combo. This is, and also, who didn't understand the power of lands? I, that's like saying, I built this shotgun to show my friends the power of bullets. My friends did, my friends did not have a good enough appreciation for having eight pounds of lead in their chest. Sack a land, gain two. Molten duplication, create a token copy of something. I'm sure that doesn't go infinite. Saw in half, I'm sure that doesn't go infinite. Orcish goddamn bowmaster. <laughs> One sentence, right now, what does this have to do with lands? One sentence, you tell me. You tell me what the fuck this has to do with showing people the power of lands. That is the second Bowmasters of the night. Oh, no, no, no. The first one was from a non... was just me dicking around in Moxville. This is the first one. Val Cult. Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever a mountain enters the battlefield, if you control five other mountains, you can have it deal three damage to start a creature or player. What does that have to do? Dockside Extortion? You said, I want to show people the power of lands. Let me get a credit card. I want to show people the power of a grassroots movement. Let me go get the American Express Black and just drop it on him. Orcish Bowmasters is actually... Hey, there's, there's a shrub in the background here. Alright. Now we're back. Man! What are we talking about?
This is 80 cards that care about lands and then the Donald Trump experience for the last 20. <clears throat> like squandered resources? Great job. Sack a land. Sack a land. Get mana. Trigger the things that care about lands. Orcish Lumberjack? Great job. And then we have other other renowned land destruction landfall effects like mana crypt meat hook massacre twin flame dual caster combo what else, what the fuck else do we have in here ah yes my favorite land effects Demonic and Vampiric Tutor. Classic, classic land support cards from Alpha. Mana Vault. Classic, classic landfall, landfall staple, Shieldred. Like Gerard's? Phenomenal. Gerard's is phenomenal. Constant Mists, phenomenal. Dread Presence, phenomenal. Underrealm Lich even makes sense to me because you have like Gitrog and you want stuff in the graveyard for Wind Grace. For Wind Grace to play with enough land, you can play Shieldred on turn two. True. This is the one deck that can't of the day that cannot convince me that it needs Soul Ring. Why doesn't the deck have Emergence Zone? Oh, that would be pretty cool. Are we on uh, zero utility lands? Well, there's a Thespian Stage. There's a Strip Mine. There's a Glacial Chasm. Command Beacon. My friend made Joda and I took that personally. Listen, that's real as hell. I have I'm not saying I'm not saying a goddamn thing about oh the deck is strong. What I'm what I'm what I'm hounding you about pun intended is the theme being I want to show people the power of lands with a dual caster twin flame infinite with my shieldred wheel of fortune combo like with my with my orcish bowies like we can make it we can make it just this terrible and it can stay uh it can keep us like completely on completely on the um the Lord Windgrace train is really what I'm talking about. Like we don't have, we have all this stuff to get rid of lands. I don't, I didn't see splendid reclamation in here. There's rude awakening, which turns all your lands into two, two creatures. Uh, you have Jokel Halcups, but we don't have, where's my boy? Where's my dog Kamal? Uh, like you could, you could turn opponent lands and your lands into lands and wipe them. Um, like there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit we could do where it's also gross and is meant to be gross to keep up with a Jota deck. Um. But is doing stuff that Lord Windgrace or even like a, a lands deck cares about doing that isn't I cast saw in half or that isn't, um, 
you know, oh, I cast Mana Crypt. Jeweled Lotus is, a, again, like, I can kind of... Depending on how cranked your table is, Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt can be totally reasonable. I just think there's a lot of... Maybe not a lot. But there's... There's a fair number of things that are very obviously... I was picking stuff... I was picking stuff for for my theme and then got to the point of, well, I, I feel like I need something really, really good. Um, and we do not all have time to go deep into the fucking recesses of Scryfall to find cards like this. And that is in part what these deck rows are for so that we can get you and the combined knowledge of the internet can help you pick up things that will fix it. Uh, <clears throat> There's also Splendid Reclamation on a body with um, that, like, Root Path Purifier. Um, and, and you could definitely do... Oh, like, taver like somebody said Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. Like, it's... I mean, we would see if your table would even accept this because it's like $3 million or whatever, but this is a fucked up land. This is a, a land that makes people upset. You could find other lands like that. Like, even Shelly, I... Even Shelly, I kind of... I kind of understand because you are drawing a lot of cards. Um... But overall, this feels similar to to the previous Zoyoa deck where for almost all of it, we're staying on this very like this very good theme. And then a couple times we divert entirely from the theme to go, ah, but this land, ah, but this land is not land, sorry. Very specifically, this not land is just such a good card. God, aggressive mining might be good. So in the context of you're trying to keep up with... Like, it's meant to be a salty deck. It's meant to keep up with an aggressive... Um, with an aggressive Joe to the Unifier deck. It seems appropriate in total power level, but you could keep it there and do cooler things than Dockside Extortionist is most of is most of my point here. You could also Where's this guy? Where's Decree of Annihilation? I win most of the time by obliterating with Heroic Intervention. Then more of this. Cut Dockside for Decree of Annihilation. Do the same thing. That will show... Hey, I'll tell you what. That will show them the power of motherfucking lands. Or... Or... And hear me out. If you... If you're trying to mess with like a high power table that's going with like ah staples all this good shit you because you're only on three colors return uh return return to basics and then hit your table with a fucking blood moon right what is the jota player what is the jota player about to say about you playing a six a six mana card that says, enjoy your lands, brother. I know I will. Done, right? We're still, this is still hateful. This is, you can keep the, I don't want the hate out of your heart. I want you to, I want you to nurture that hatred and I want it to grow into a beautiful flower and we can pick some very specific things to make a scaffolding 
for the lotus flower of making your table feel very very bad and showing them and showing them what lands mean maelstrom joda and kenny are his decks yeah that sounds like a man that's just waiting to get his tibias smashed in by a blood moon Makes Valakut much better at the same time. True, yeah. Like the... Like there's a lot... I think there's a lot of space to continue refining how, how awful this is. Uh, and move away from the things that go... Um, that are just in the like EDH rec top a million well not top a million but like top top 100 yeah scape shift also great if we don't have that in there already prismatic omen oh you have scape shift okay great oh yeah it's in here Prismatic Omens, Valakut, and Scapeshift are my favorite ways to win. Yeah, and that's the power of land, right? That's exactly what we want. Not, not Orcish Bowmasters, not, oh, I dual caster mage twin flame, got him GG's. Like, we want to make it so that Valakut is blowing people to hell as many times as possible or hit him with the merit lage right this is the this is the commander to to hit people with the goddamn merit lage combo <clears throat> all right so with that said we're going to move on to lockman 98's deck mogus asks one question do you want your creature or do you want to be flicked in the face? The deck wants to make that decision harder. Okay. So hard decisions, the deck. I don't remember Mogus, God, God of Slaughter too well. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, Mogus deals two damage to that player unless he or she or they sacrifice a creature. All right. So off the bat, what I'm envisioning is something that probably multiplies multiplies the damage you deal that would be like number one um people will almost never choose to sacrifice a creature and so in, in the context of making that decision in the context of making that decision harder I feel like this is going to lean a lot towards you taking that two damage is going to fuck you up a lot versus sacrificing that creature is going to fuck you up a lot because everybody's really greedy with their creatures. All right, it's $400. We have 35 lands. So pretty much all of today we've been in the realm of reasonability. Dumble Dorito, thank you for the follow. Okay. When Invasion of Asgol enters the battlefield, target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and loses one life. That's not even make the decision harder. That's to take the decision away. Make it twice. Make it twice and have both bad things happen to you. Invasion of Karsus. Board wipe. Once again, we're not, we're not making the decision harder. We're getting rid of it. What do these flip into? All right, benefits from people, benefits from people, oh, of your end step. Benefits from descend, from descending, from chungling down. Burn, all right. The front side, the front sides make sense. Angrath, make everyone discard. Oh, he's so cute in this art, though. Okay, gain control of stuff and sack it burn them for cards in their graveyard so so far i 
Alright. Barbed Servitor. What the hell is this guy doing? I'm gonna... We're gonna pin this moment. We're gonna come back when I see the way that you are able to deal 8 million damage to Barb Servitor. And if we don't see that, I'm gonna get you. But I trust you, because you said it leans into burn, that we will see that. So we'll come back and we'll give you your good boy points when we see that. Alright, Blood Artist. So that makes the death choice harder. Blood Seeker. This is good. This... You know what? Fuck the token players. Fuck the token players. I get it. Circuit Mender is... I'm losing faith. Hey, y'all. I'm losing faith. A Dreadhorde Butcher. Good Rakdos card. This seems... This seems on theme of generically bitching things. I'm not convinced that this is on theme. Uh... Circuit Mender's not on theme at all. He's just a little guy, honestly. If you if you have him in the deck because he's a little guy, I'm so down with that. That's the best reason to put a card in a deck. My girlfriend was working on their pre-con upgrade the other day, and we were looking through cards, and I was like, you should cut this because it's not good. And they were like, but it's a payoff for this. And I was like, you can do that three times in the deck. And they, so and they went, but she's hot. And I was like, keep it. <laughs> Like those are the reasons. Those are these are the reasons you keep stuff. If you want to make a deck better, we can talk all day about numbers and optimal and all that. But if you if you want to be like for my turn, draw main phase one little guy pass take two. I am with you until the end of days. I am with, I will I will defend circuit man circuit mender being in the deck. That said, if you do want to make it better, cut the little guy. Um, or cut Dreadhorde Butcher. It depends on how many damage multipliers you get, but I don't see this as... I don't see this as particularly contributory to your theme either. Eidolon of Great Revel, Burn. Me when I recency bias, this has to be a meta call. Because some of the pods... Can you, Babe, can you imagine if I brought... Oh my god. <laughs> my girlfriend hacked Pal World while we're doing this. Anyway, most of the tables I play at, if I tried to punish people for only casting CMC three or less spells, I would get boofed instantly. So I, I'm going to hope that this is a meta call, and if it's not, dump it immediately for a little guy. Fiendish Duo... Sure, really expensive, but it is on theme. Great unclean one. Life loss, sure. Grima worm tongue. No life gain. <laughs> Love it. Love it. I don't think this guy works other than your opponents can't gain life, though. I don't, it doesn't look like you're making tokens at any point. And so, sacking other creatures to... Sacking other creatures to make this work doesn't seem like a thing that's going... He's only there for the static. Lachman, have you considered Stigma Balls? Have you considered Stigma Balls, Lockman? Right now, Grima, you got him just you got him just for the static, and if he dies, it's gone. Stigma Lasher, you tap him you tap him once, never again, bro. They're done. They're done.
uh reaper incarnate it is a patreon tier reward um i think my patreon should be on my youtube channel description uh but it is a you get one deck roast a month and i do deck roasts once or multiple times a week to uh complete them all right and then croaks to make people discard does a little bit more life life loss Okay, this makes this makes them more likely to choose the damage. Massacre worm more like makes them more likely to choose the damage. Makes them more likely to choose the damage. Makes them more likely to choose the damage. Is black. This seems like burn. I'm not yet convinced you have enough burn payoffs to make this really good, but we're not we're only through a little bit of the deck so far. Make treasures. Card advantage. Prosper's Prosper's good as fuck. I won't I won't deny you Prosper. Burning Sands. Oh, this is horrible is burning sands nah you gotta you my man my man you gotta get on this right now you gotta get on burning sands right this moment make them sack a land you need to you need to be on no creatures burning sands only gaming fuck fuck your friends fuck their moms Burning Sands Gaming. And their dads. And their cousins. That are of the age of consent. Rakdos the Showstopper. This has nothing to do with the choice. Other than maybe forcing them to take the damage. Siobhan. Just to pay off for having a shitload of mana. Ran monarch moment. Me when I monarch. This seems like another, uh, just like generic life loss effect. Another thing, hoping they pick the damage. Another thing, hoping they pick the damage. Ooh, I'm not sure about Torwalki. You have nine instants. You have 17 cards in the deck that can trigger this, which is you're probably seeing two a game, two to three a game. I get, I get that it's a damage. I get that it's a damage dealer. Me personally. I'm going to I'm going to get through the, I'm going to speed read the rest of this deck before I before I make this final uh this final call. Okay. Mana generic, you know, one ring and then some generically good sacrifice things. City on fire. Descent into Avernus. So one, two. Three with Torwalki. Okay. <clears throat> So what I would say is you have a you have a deck with a lot of things that are pushing people to uh, take the two to the face option, and you have almost zero ways to benefit from or otherwise cap like you have almost no ways to capitalize on them taking the two to the face 
and for it to be really Mogus's arena we need ways to capitalize on them taking two to the face otherwise we just kind of have like Rakdos deck otherwise we have like we have Rakdos control which is not a bad archetype but I think it will be more fun if it is like you have a, you have an indestructible enchantment creature as your commander and so you can really lean in to making this be a Mogus deck and really making every choice really difficult not this Joshua seek help this is a fucked up terrible card I'm playing this against everyone now you you're cooked what? your days are numbered your days are numbered what does it do? four mana enchantment uh -huh. whenever a creature comes into play its controller sacrifices a creature or a land This is the hot tech for us against offbeat. Oh. This is the hot offbeat tech. Get them. <laughs> fucking. Get them. Um, and so we have a ton of things. We have a ton of things that are really good about making them want to pick the damage. And we have a couple, right? We have like four things. Uh, we have like four things that can capitalize on them picking damage. We have... Fiendish Duo, we have Fiery Emancipation, we have City on Fire, and we have Tor Wauki. We need, we need more of these. Like Torbran would be good. Solfim would be good. Um, this is the, oh, this is, let's circle back to what I said earlier about a deck can choose a deck can choose to do two things really well and once it tries to do three things it starts to do it badly you're trying to do three things you may understand it as two you may understand it as either of these two choices the three things you're trying to do are you're trying to make people sacrifice creatures you're trying to make people take damage and you're trying to make people lose life and that can be seen uh, with your things like Kroxa, which is doing lose life rather than damage, or Great Unclean One, which is lose life rather than do damage. You will have a better time if instead you commit to, you pick two and you say, I'm going to do creature, benefit off creature sacrifice, benefit off damage, or creature sacrifice, benefit off life loss. And depending on which one of those you choose, you're going to get rid of things like Eidolon and Fiendish Duo and replace them with things that benefit off of life loss. Or you're going to get rid of things like Great Unclean One and Kroxa and you're going to put in things that benefit from or help dealing burn damage. Like right now, you're straddling a lot of different options and that only ends with you getting seesawed in the nuts. And we need to we need to hone in on two of those things. I think your I think your balance on that first half of pick a bunch of shit that's gonna make them choose the damage, I think that's good. And I think from there you need to soul search. You need to look at your friends and you need to look at the payoffs for life loss versus the payoffs for burn and ask yourself which of these is going to make these people not want to speak to me ever again. And you need to really, really bear down on that one. Super Sam has some great suggestions for that. Like mechanized warfare is a really cheap one. Ember Maw Hellions, another one. The deck does have Prisoner's Dilemma. Uh, but if you want to do damage, we need to do damage. 
Cut Orcish Bowmasters yesterday. Pretty please. Keep Shiny Impetus because it's fucking hilarious. No matter no matter how on theme your a deck ever gets, it has one slot for Shiny Impetus. Yeah, like Protection Racket. This is a great card uh, for for life loss, life loss benefits. And right now we're halfway in between life loss and direct damage. Because right now, like I would say Protection Racket doesn't want to be in the same deck as City on Fire. You should, you should pick if your deck wants to be on let's see you should pick if your deck wants to be on life loss for which i have not identified the like tent pole card or if you want to be on city on fire and when you pick those things then work backwards I'm not sure what Orcish Medicine is for. I would cut it instantly. That's my overall feeling. Boom roasted. Uh, I will say Mogus. It's a god. It can get it. If you have the opportunity, you have to try. And we're going to move on to the final deck of the evening. Boomer's Swarmlord deck. I haven't seen them come through. Glad I didn't get beaten behind the Arby's. It's a good shot. It's just, you know, it's unfocused. And a lot of people bring unfocused but good shots in. 35 lands. I'm glad. I am glad that we have some adults today. Another fucking soul ring. I wonder how much they changed from the pre-con. Because the, the Tyranids pre-con was, like, pretty... Pretty fucking focused. Okay. Tyranid, 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 Tyranid. Straight out of the precon. Okay, Kami Whispered Hopes. We have our first we have our first swap. Tyranid, 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 Tyranid. Tyranid, Tyranid. Roaming Throne, okay. We're in the brave We're in the brave, brave land of switching out precon staples. For every commander deck staples. Tyranid Tyranid. Tyranid. That's my that's my goat Marcus. I know this is a swap from a different precon, but Marcus Marcus hot as hell. Tyranid Tyranid. Tyranid 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 Tyranid. Aetherize. Tyranid. Okay, and then the Mothman. I, I love the Mothman precon, so I know half the cards by heart. Ripples of potential. Oh, Jesus. This is like the unholy love child of three precons right now. It's the it's the child of the the Hawkball precon, the Mothman precon, and the Tyranid precon. More forty K. And then it does look like it does look like they've messed with the land base a little bit. This is the goddamn <laughs> this is the goddamn precon and my man went through and got the two best cards out of the mutant mayhem fallout deck and of the hawkball LCI deck and he sent it in. I mean, what do I was Yes, hey it works as as precons do this deck works so let's maybe let's spend our time preparing some upgrades for this gentleman crystalline crawler they they should definitely be going into proliferate they should definitely be going into good proliferation stuff 
I'm trying to think of probably like Inexorable Tide. Animar would definitely be good. Frank, yeah, it's Frankenstein's precon. I mean, Animar is eight dollars, but I mean, like you get Animar and you just stuff him in there. Thrumming Bird would also be good. So what's the list? It's Crystalline Crawler, it's Animar, it's Thrumming Bird, Flux Mage Channeler. I probably spelled Channeler wrong. What? Is it just... Oh, it's just Flux Channeler. I'm not sure if Prolif on non-creature will work. Let's see. 10 enchantments, 6 instants, 7. So that's 23. That would work. Yeah, that would be fine. 23 is high enough that you can kind of commit, commit to that. Got to abuse the X costs. Yeah, that is true. Vorinclex would Vorinclex would also be good in here. Vorinclex do in fact be good in almost every green deck because almost every green deck cares about plus one plus one counters. Oh, we do have all will be one in here as well. So even more reason to care a lot about proliferate. Let me see if they're. No, it just says Swarmlord in the zone, Secret Commander, Magus Lucia Kane. Hydra Broodmaster. Mm. <clears throat> I'm not a hundred percent unless. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it works for it works for ability activation. We need Hydra Broodmaster in yesterday. Oh, I'm not logged in, so I can't duplicate this to fuck the to fuck it up myself. Tekusol. I'm not a hundred percent that we want Tekusol because I don't think we're gonna get up to I don't believe that we're going to get up to like 20 or more ways to proliferate. And that's what we would want to be at if we were going to have uh, Tekuthal be a meaningful part of the deck. Because he does not... Uh, he does not contribute to anything else the deck is doing because he's not X cost. And he's not getting a 1-1 one -one counter onto himself. Hello, Mercedes. Uncivil unrest is ten dollars, but very cash money. Oh shit, that is cash money. Double damage off your counter things? Evolution Sage would yes, also very cash money. Although cash money again in like every green deck in the world. Yeah, so we could definitely fix this. Because, again, this is, for the most part, this is a pre-con with, I think, like, four swaps. Um, which isn't necessarily bad if he's trying to keep it... If he's trying to keep it really close to pre-con level. What the... I, I guess I'm supposed to roast the Wizards design team, which... Fuck them for making uh, this goddamn 1-1 one, one counter monstrosity, by the way. I've played against this, and I've made a video about this. This deck is the best deck in the world at getting third place. Because all this deck wants to do is pop off so quickly that everybody in the table bands together to eliminate the Tyranid Menace. Like, everybody, as soon as you come out with the Swarm Lord everybody else starts playing Helldivers 2 and they just eliminate the insectoid scum and then you get third because you've been pushed into the ground yeah so points for lore accuracy zero points for the deck being playable because i've seen it played like between five and ten times and that's the story of the deck every time as you play this you're like wow 
I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a lot of fun and then you play your third non land permanent and everyone's like get his balls take them take his counters and his balls and his ability to feel joy hell divers role play table exactly we just honestly the 40k is kind of hell divers role play table because you have the automatons with the necron precon you have the insectoid scum with the tyranids and then you have the two reasonable motherfuckers trying to kill them and spread democracy why not vigor vigor and oh defiler of vigor I kind of recognize offhand. Yeah, Defiler of Vigor for sure. Yeah, Vigor and Defiler of Vigor would be incredible. Garuk's Uprising. Uh, famously categorized as reasonable motherfuckers. Chaos in the 41st millennium. Hell yes. Okay, so Beefcake, when you watch this roast or Boomer, sorry, Boomer, when you watch this roast back, uh, <laughs> here is a list of all the ways you can make this horrible without it being a homunculus of other precons. Um, that is going to be it for today's deck roast stream. Thank you to everybody that came, watched, and subscribed. We will be live again next Monday doing a viewer game stream on Magic the Gathering Arena. So if you want to play Arena against me, come back Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I hope to see you all there. I hope you have a good weekend. And remember to stay toxic.